Hey there, I want to bring you this video showing you the construction, as you can see behind me, of a foam board enclosure that I made around my Intex inflatable portable hot tub. Uh, it's not my idea originally. I did some research on YouTube, on the internet, and found another fabulous video done by a woman in Canada. Uh, I'll put you a credit down in the comments. I can't remember who it was but got the idea from her and just kind of tweaked mine a little bit, um, added on a little bit and maybe even made some mistakes and came up with some uh, maybe su suggestions I want to pass on to you if you want to do the same thing. Now, I'm in Michigan. Uh, as you can see behind me, the sun is out today, uh, but it's cold and we know that snow is around the corner. Uh, a couple weeks ago we got 10 inches, but it soon melted off, but it is coming. We're right on the lake shore. Uh, lake Michigan, we get a lot of lake effect snow, wind out of the west, uh, sometimes blizzard-like conditions, but I want to see how far into the winter months I can use this hot tub. So let's switch this camera around. And let me show you what I did and give you some pointers. Uh, I'll do a quick walk around first. You can see got these two end boxes and I'll talk about what I did there. But for starters, I end up purchasing about seven panels. Now, the other builder of one of these, she used two inch thick. I used inch and a half. My local home improvement store, I paid about $23. You may be more, you may be less. And the tape that I used is this tuck tape. Uh, I guess it's also called a sheathing tape. I chose to get the white because I had the white side facing out. Got all done and I don't know if I made a mistake because the other side, as you can see on my scrap piece here, is silver. I don't know if exposing you know one side in versus one side out gives you better insulation properties. Uh, if you know, please put it in the comments. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe it doesn't matter. I'm not sure. So I purchased seven panels and my seventh one, I only used half of it. So I, I measured the height. I made the, the box going around the outside. The scrap pieces that would normally have stood up, you know, about that much higher, I lined up on the bottom. So they run the full length, but they're only, you know, so wide and just kind of butted them all together, ran some extra tape that I had laying around the house because that was before I had the, the tuck tape and just kind of taped them all together. I probably should have done a better job centering the hot tub. I got it a little off center and in hindsight I probably should have went wider you know this way width wise uh, because as you can see if, if possibly if you can see this side is bowing out a little bit because as the hot tub gets cold it starts to lose its pressure and when it starts to lose its pressure it seems to want to bow out on either side more so than going this way. I don't know why. Um, yeah, like I said, I didn't do a good enough job centering it. Uh, lessons learned for next winter. But what did I do to cut this? So I first used my blade knife here, but it would only go down, as you can see, about to that, that line. The first couple times, I just tried to snap it. It didn't create a nice, clean edge. Uh, it was kind of rough. And then. I got a hold of my putty knife, and if I pushed the putty knife, it would easily cut right through it. And when I did that, then it would create a nice, smooth cut. I would fold it over, run the blade down through, and I finished my cut. So that was kind of a lesson learned on easier ways of cutting the foam board. Uh, as you see these blocks that I have laying around, I took extra piece of foam, put a patio block right there. That's what it would look like. Foam, 
little patio block, put it in a shopping bag, tied it off, taped it, and these are my weights. I have a few of those that I put on this side. This is the west side of the hot tub. We get strong westerly winds during the winter time, so I wanted this side of all edges to be weighed down. So let's take a look at this. So I put the base down, I put the hot tub, I filled the hot tub, I had the side panels already cut, I did that inside the garage, then brought them out and started to tape them together. And before I flip the top back, let me point out here. So this was uh, the other builders, uh, the way she did it, uh, put two together and I just ran tape, you know, sideways, lengthwise, ran a bunch of it. And then I did the same thing on the inside, wrapped it around different areas and ran it back and forth. And that gave me a nice hinge. Now, as you can see here, I ran some tuck tape on the edge. This is where the second roll came in because I want to go through and finish all these other edges to better protect that. So when I brought the side panels out, uh, it was kind of tricky. I did it by myself. Um, I don't think I had any of my kids really help me. I did this by myself, so I'll call it a one man, one person job. Just put little pieces to hold it together and just started running back and forth, up and down, as well as on the inside. Ran that as well. Now, as you can see, this wants to slide. So my next plan of action is to take small scrap pieces and whether I do it on the outside or most likely on the inside is tape them down in the corners down in there so that way it doesn't shift. The nice little open corners I can store my headrest, my cup holder, my skimmer net all in a corner keep my equipment all inside. So I put the panels together got my box built all the way around now I wanted to build my boxes out here. So the top is just one piece that I can easily remove off. Ugh. Yep, it gets cold. Got some moisture on there and it froze it. It froze it down. Okay, on the inside, this is where my pump and my heater is. I wrap a small blanket around to keep it nice and insulated and I can feel the heat. It's doing an excellent job keeping that insulation, that heat trapped inside there. I built the box so it was just slightly higher than the heater. I probably could have gone maybe another inch higher. You see this little cheater box out here? Little piece, taped it down, tuck tape. It's very sticky, very tacky tape. It's excellent to work with. I've never used it before and I love this stuff. And that way this box doesn't slide out away from the hot tub. You can see the end panel has my cutout. So that way all the plumbing goes right through the inside. The blanket helps keep it and keep the heat inside. The cover helps keep the heat trapped in as well. I probably could have gone a little bit more clearance on the side here. Oh, let me see. You're not going to be able to see, but there is this knob down here. And that's what I turn for my, I've got the Intex Pure Spa. So that's where I turn to inflate, if I have to inflate it. I can still reach my hand down there, but it would be nice to maybe have another inch or two space. So this is where my heater and my pump is. The cord, it's run underneath and goes all the way around. So that way I have no cord exposed on the outside. The cord comes out, pops out in the back, runs straight over to my outlet. All right, now let's go back to this other box that I built. I call this my hot box. Because these portable inflatable hot tubs, they don't recycle the water as typical water jets in your more traditional hot tub jacuzzis as a lot of people call them. These portable inflatable ones, they pull in water from, or they pull in air from the outside 
pump it through the little jet holes, little jet channels, and that's what creates the bubbles. Well, you're pulling super cold air in the wintertime, and it's going to be cooling off your water. So I thought, well, if I could just heat that air, maybe I would get more use. Because a lot of people claim that the problem is they want to enjoy the hot tub, they go out, they sit in it, they turn the bubbler on, and if they leave the bubbler running within 20 minutes, the water starts to feel cold, and after a while, within 30 minutes or so, it's too cold to even enjoy it. So, here's what I did. Here's what the box would look like. Created the sides, the bottom, and the top. Created another hinge. I drilled some holes on the end there. Went out, got me a small little portable ceramic heater. And there's my opening. It goes right in to where the, uh, the area is that draws in the air for the bubbler. I made sure it was on this side of my, my heater unit. That way it didn't have to travel all the way around the other side. I lined this with aluminum foil as well as aluminum tape that you would use on like ductwork systems. And I can set it to low, I can set it to high, and I put it right up against that hole. And I found the first couple times if I closed this tight, it got too hot in there, it couldn't draw enough air in, and the, the overheat protection system built into these heaters, it kept cutting it off. So is what I have to do now is I just put this block, close that down a little bit, so that way when it's raining or snowing, it doesn't get down inside there. It still pulls in enough fresh air, keeps it cooled down, but yet it pumps the hot air into my chamber over here and this is all closed up. Yes, I do make sure that the blanket is only on the top. I don't tuck it way deep down inside. Now, anybody who's an electrician or what have you, please don't crucify me here, but this is what I came up with. Uh, if you have any suggestions, um, yeah, you put it in the comments you decide to do it this way do it at your own risk um, yeah you're sitting in water dealing with this um, disclaimer don't do as I do you know assume your own risk um, but typically is what I'll do is I'll turn this on then I'll get in or a couple times I've just reached out flipped over to on kicked on that heater turn on my bubbler for a little bit enjoy the bubbles turn the bubbler off now this is running to the same circuit and I did trip it the other night because the heater was running. This, both heaters were running. And then come to find out it's on the same circuit as some stuff inside my living room. It was just enough to trip the breaker. So I need to take this small heater system and try to find another outlet that's on a different uh, circuit. But I'm gonna see if that helps give me some more bubbler time when I wanna use the hot tub. Then I can just fold this over, tuck it down. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Put that on, boom, that's all sealed up. So let me step back a little bit. So that's what it looks like. The, the top cover is very light. I can just take this, oops, and I can flip it off, lean it up against the house, take my hot tub cover, flip that, kind of roll it up, tuck it off into that side. I don't even have to pull it completely off. It just stays right back there. Um, I'm going to see how long I can use my hot tub into the winter when it starts to snow and gets really cold. I may end up shutting it down after a little bit. I'll take, keep an eye on my electric bill. I'll try to get back to you in the spring and see uh, what kind of change it was on my bill. Um, I am turning the heater off at night and only turning it on in the morning when I know there's days that I'm going to want to use it. And this thing has done a fabulous job so far keeping the heat locked in there and it does not cool off, you know, a, a lot. Yes, it cools off some, but I think between the Intex blue cover, the bladder that they put inside these things, the way that the walls are built, as well as the foam enclosure, it's doing a good job of trapping the heat in. So 
there's some pointers. There's my idea. Um, if you have any questions, put them in a comment. I always check comments of this type of video as well as many others that I do. And uh, here's the best to you. And let's see how long we can use our hot tub going into the winter.